Well, welcome back to the show. Good to have your company right across this great country of ours. Well, a vital day in the battle against coronavirus, the World Health Organization declaring a global pandemic. Talk about slow on the uptake. And our Prime Minister today unveiling his full $17 billion stimulus package aimed at preventing a recession with help for small businesses, millions of workers and pensioners. To discuss, 3 aws Neil Mitchell in Melbourne and Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you this morning. Jackie, to you first of all, $17 billion. Hard to falter? Oh, look, we certainly need a stimulus package. There's no doubt about that. It's just... Look, it's going to depend on how much money is going where, how well targeted it is and how long it actually takes the government to get up and actually deliver this out. That, I guess, I, I, they're, the, they're the main factors for me. So, you know, usually government's answer. pretty bit slow on delivering things, mate, and they don't have time to be mucking around with this sort of stuff. They need to get it out as soon as possible. Neil? I can, I can answer that a bit, Carl. I've been talking to sources this morning because there's so many figures around. Mm. It's going to be a total of $20 billion. Now, $2 billion of that goes to health. There'll be $18 billion elsewhere. It'll be mostly targeted at small business, and I believe it's going to be rolled out very, very quickly, most of it before the end of this financial year, which mm. is about three months. I know you're talking to the Prime Minister later. I don't know if he'll confirm that because mm. he's got a mid-morning press conference to tell us more. Yeah. But it will be small business and it'll be quick. OK. Um, in terms of casual workers, uh, there's three, million, uh, three billion of them, sorry, three million of them in Australia. Um, Jackie, do you think anything should have been targeted towards those three million casual workers? Well, first of all, we're not sure how bad this coronavirus is going to end up and mm. if it's going to put a lot of those casual workers out of work um, and they're not getting any stimulus, then I think we've got a problem because no good giving small business money if they're not getting the customers to come inside their shops, is their car. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Neil? Well, it depends what you're doing. If you're making widgets, people are still going to need widgets. But you're right. I mean, uh, tourism is going to be down. Restaurants are going to be down. People are... Somebody said to me yesterday, the streets of Melbourne look like Christmas Day. There's yeah. nobody there. Yeah, and it's, it's everywhere. Um, I thought Tasmania was going to close its doors, Jackie. Uh, we're being vigilant, mate. Look, we don't, we don't have a lot of money in the kitty, I'll be honest with you. So we're just trying to keep things ticking ticking over down here. Um, people are being... Um, they're getting on with their every day. Mate, I'm out there. I'm getting hugs and handshakes. Yeah. Oh, you know, how, how do you stop that from, from yeah. happening? Um, that's quite difficult. Uh, but Tasmanians are just getting on with it. And, um, look, more testing stations, mate, more testing stations. There's a lot of people out there that are saying to me, I'm not sure, you know, if I've got a sniffy nose or runny nose, mm. um, you know, I've got a couple of things here, do I go and get tested? Do I put the public health system down here that's already under the pump? Do we put it further under the pump? More testing stations would be great. I think, I think you make a good point, and, and I believe also that, that we should, there should be ads on the television explaining what people should be watching out for. There needs to be much more resources devoted to that, to, to educating the Australian public. I mean, we had, we had all sorts of messages coming out from the government surrounding bush this is this is of great importance this and we're not seeing anything Neil should the F1 go ahead no in my, well, if it goes ahead, it should be without a crowd. If these three people test positive, and we don't know that yet, I think they... And it starts today. Remember, the crowds go in today. I think the weekend, which is the busy time, should be run without crowds. I don't think they'll do that for a moment. And they're talking about the test taking a couple of days. Yeah. Fast track them. You can do it in three hours. Oh, and they're also saying this is bizarre. They're saying, OK, w w this is all reliant, or the F1 going ahead is all reliant on whether or not these people contracted the virus overseas or whether it was person to person in Australia. Either way, they've got it. Yeah, and either way, they've been moving around people for a couple of days. I wouldn't be going near it. I, I think, I'm astounded it's still going on, really, but yeah. I think they might back off if these people are positive. OK, cancelling uh, big sporting events, Jackie. What do you think? Yeah, well, we've just had to cancel Dark Mofo down here. Yeah. Um, one, for insurance reasons, and two, because it's millions of dollars that we have to put in beforehand. A lot of the entertainers are coming from overseas. So that was a really big call for Tasmania. Um, it is one of our biggest tourism um, busters for the year, and to cancel that um, is going to hit us really hard, mate. Yeah, it's really sad news, that. It's such yeah. a terrific festival. Love it. Um, yes. Let's get your thoughts on this one, on another sex scandal rocking the NRL. Uh, two Canterbury Bulldogs players stood down yesterday for having consensual sex with two 17-year-old schoolgirls at the team hotel after meeting them on a school visit. Now, they need to be sacked, don't they, Neil? 
Of course they need to be sacked and needs to apology. I thought the NRL was a bit mealy-mouthed on it yesterday. Yeah. It's, it's an outrageous... Forget with the legality. I accept that it's not illegal, but it's an outrageous breach of trust. You're mm. invited into the school. It's, it's, it's almost tantamount to a teacher doing it. Yeah, I agree. And this, this is, comes at a time when we're trying to send a message, aren't we, Jackie? Yes, we certainly are trying to send a message. Those boys should know better. They're under the spotlight. Um, you know, they have a lot of fans out there. Uh, look, this all, um, whether or not this kills their careers, but I know the Bulldogs have already lost sponsorship over this too, I believe. Mm. So everyone's really getting hit with this. This sort of behaviour is not on anymore. Um, it's over. OK, I agree with you on that one wholeheartedly. Um, just before we get to Prince Harry, Neil, I wanted to ask you briefly, um, the situation in Melbourne overnight, terrible with these stabbings, um, with, a, with a bunch of issues there uh, during the course of the last 12, ish, uh, 12 hours. Um, what is going on? Are you hearing anything? Well, the police are going to tell us more in the next half hour. It's Jollymont, Richmond, Rich, Jollymont Q in that area. It's out to the eastern yeah. suburbs. Yeah, three people dead, one shot dead by police. As yet, there's a suspicion they're linked, but we haven't got the details. We're not sure of it. But nasty stuff. Jeez, a man found it. dead in a car, another one stabbed, and uh, police shoot somebody dead. Tough time for law and order in Melbourne. It is a tough time for law and order. It has been for some years. Um, I think we've been distracted by the coronavirus. Yeah. OK, let's mm. finish on a much lighter note, depending on which side of the fence you stand on this one. Um, poor old <laughs> Prince Harry can't take a break at the moment, can he? Uh, he appears to have been, or appears to have been, because I don't know for certain, uh, duped by Russian tricksters posing as environmentalist Greta Thunberg. Have a listen. Like that Donald Trump is, is pushing the, the coal industry so big in America um, he, he has blood on his hands because the, the, the effect that that has on the climate and on the island nations far, far away, again, out of sight, out of mind. Jackie, it looks like Prince Harry. Well, kind of. Uh, it certainly sounds like him. What do you think? Oh, I think um, he's just, he's going through that transition of, you know, they want to go out and they want to make their own money. They're going to have to write, make sure that they've got the right people around them to give them the right advice. They're going to have to still make sure that they're fairly well covered both with that and security. And I think during this transition period, they're just going to have to step really, really carefully. Be careful who they're speaking to, mate, if, that, if that's true. <laughs> so I am a bit of a fan of Prince Harry's. I, I do like him. So, oh. you know, they just let them go yeah, through that transition go. period. Well, yeah. here we go, Jackie. You could be heading up the PR team for Prince Harry. That'd sort them out. Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah. I'd stop all that rubbish going on. There'd be no speaking to anyone. <laughs> yeah. New job for know. me. Neil? I reckon, it'll, I reckon it'll do his image an enormous amount of good. Yeah. He's, he's just dropped the diplomacy and said what he's been saying in public with a bit more brutal fashion. Yeah, yeah. But I can't believe he answered his own phone. You don't answer your own phone, no, Carl. I... Why does he? Well, I can't find it. <laughs> 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 Thank you, you guys. Uh, have a great week. Thank See you. you soon. Still Thank to you. come on today, panic, shoppers, strip, supermarket shelves, bearers, coronavirus.